<clears throat> okay, so we are broadcasting and recording. We'll give it a couple more minutes for people to get logged in here. I see that we only, oh, we got three people now. Okay. So again, thank you for joining. We'll give it a couple more minutes for some folks uh, to get logged in and then we'll get started. Okay, let's go ahead and go get started with uh, today's webinar. Thank you for joining. Um, a few housekeeping items. Everyone who is an attendee has been muted and uh, we will welcome questions at the end of the presentation. Um, we should be able to get through this in about 25 minutes or so. Um, and at that time, uh, feel free to um, either raise your hand through the Zoom meeting or enter in your uh, questions via chat. If you do raise your hand, I will uh, have the ability to unmute your mic and then you'll be able to um, engage in some conversation and discussion with our presenter. Um, with that, I wanna welcome uh, everyone to our weekly Wednesday webinar. We will be here every Wednesday, 10 a.m. Uh, covering different topics related to our expertise in construction accounting, estimating project management solutions. We're here to offer resources to the industry and really support your success with the SAGE products. Um, Ed Wentz has a diverse background in, um, in the industry, um, 30 plus years of experience uh, ranging from field superintendent, chief estimator, project manager, conceptual estimator, as well as IT. The experience he has has allowed him to work on uh, so many different levels within the construction industry, including general uh, contracting and subcontracting. He helps clients seeking improved efficiency through technology and better communication. So uh, with that, I will um, hand it over to Ed as he covers stage estimating and all of its different features and capabilities. 
Hello, everyone. Uh, this is Ed Wenz, and I'm uh, thank you for joining me today. I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, Sage estimating. We've got a short period of time, but we do welcome any questions, as Lavani had pointed out. And uh, if we can't get your questions, we will certainly follow up with those uh, via email at the end. So, uh, with that, I'd uh, like to uh, first talk about how Sage estimating is set up. Um, it's a database system. And most estimators uh, typically use uh, spreadsheets for estimating. Um, that is, if you don't already have a database-driven system. But there are some huge differences uh, for that. And um, one of the benefits is no more blown or corrupted uh, formulas when you use a database-driven system. Very important, this is one of the most common issues with spreadsheets. A uh, consistent manageable source uh, for unit costs. Uh, too often the costs uh, in spreadsheets are fragmented or all over the place. At least with the database driven system, the original unit costs are used for new estimates. Any changes that are made uh, in the estimate did not affect the original database. There's extensive automation providing consistent accuracy and a lot of that is done with uh, pre-built assemblies and models. And above all, the entire system is completely customizable. So here we have a screenshot of um, the look and feel, or at least the look of Excel uh, versus um, Sage estimating. Uh, this is the Sage spreadsheet. Looks a lot like Excel. It functions the same way. You have row headers, you have column headers, but there's many, many more features that we'll uh, touch on as we go through this. Uh, as you can see, um, you have uh, your sequence tabs down at the bottom that we'll touch on momentarily. That's similar to the tabs that you might have in a spreadsheet, and each one of these can function differently. I'll go ahead and I'll get started on just doing you, uh, giving you a quick presentation uh, of one of the assemblies that helps control the data that uh, goes into the estimate. Uh, this is an example of our assembly. Um, Assemblies can be just raw information where you have a checklist of items, but uh, what Sage uses is called smart assemblies where all of these are logic driven. In other words, there are formulas calculating what's required and how many of what is required for each assembly. Like in this particular case, it's a uh, metal partition with uh, drywall studs. They're designed to calculate uh, the correct items and quantities and pricing required for the overall cost of uh, work. And there's, in addition, there's models, which are assemblies of assemblies that go to greater detail. Instead of just having wall partitions, you might actually have a tenant improvement of an entire building uh, with all the components required for that. So think of an assembly also and models as a method of having uh, a checklist of things to go through to make sure that you've got everything covered in your estimate. The core structure of Sage estimating is in the coding and out of the box it it's ready for master format uh, although it could use many other format systems uh, currently I think we're on uh, 2018 is the master format code it's already up to 2018 which is about 48 divisions uh, but keep in mind one of the most valuable things uh, or, or aspects to this tool is that it can simultaneously have 16 division um, and uniformat or any custom company coding systems. It's a considerable time saver, uh, especially when you sometimes have bid owner forms that do not align uh, with your own estimating coding system. So you can have a, uh, an estimate uh, print out or um, developed rather uh, in your own coding system but report it on the coding system required for the, uh, the client's bid form. Database, database items can include any single or multiple cost categories. There's a total of five different cost categories, which is labor, material, subcontract, equipment, and other. You can see those up on top here. And this is just a hyphenated view of the screen. And uh, every item in the entire database or that you use for an estimate must have at least one of those. And some could have um, up to three or four uh, if needed. So let's look at the labor cost category for a moment. Um, it can work with a number of labor rate tables. It may be project or region specific. 
Uh, you can create and save new crews uh, from any combination uh, of labor and equipment resources. And it automatically calculates the project total crew hours and man hours uh, for labor and equipment. We'll see that later when I show you the totals page. It'll actually show you a complete generation of the total hours for the entire project. The material cost category is um, it's used and predefined uh, by any units of measure uh, that meet your pricing needs. Uh, you can pretty much you can buy a um, predefined uh, database or you can develop your own. All the items in the database uh, will have any number of uh, units of measure that are required or needed. Uh, it'll also, um, when you do your material takeoff, it can apply waste, packaging sizes, and discounts as needed to truly reflect the cost of the estimate. Looks like I might have skipped one here. There we go, subcontractor cost. Uh, this is a very valuable tool. Um, Sage estimating is not just for general contracting um, or subs, it's for both. And so one of the features uh, that you see right here for subcontracting is ideal for general contractors. Uh, you can see down in here that uh, there's a number of different uh, subcontractors that provided bids. This is after you already established your own estimate. And what it's done is it's actually taken their their amount of uh, almost $2 million and that dollar amount replaces all of the costs associated in this red box here. So in other words, their bid offsets any estimated costs that you've already provided. The information is still there if you decide to change subcontractors, you can change that at any time, or if you say, you know what, uh, I'm just gonna go with my own estimate number and it'll bring those estimate numbers back in. You have full control over this at all times. Let's take a look at the equipment and other cost categories. Uh, it's similar to labor uh, as far as the equipment goes, the way it's uh, set up. It has rates based on rental or ownership. There's uh, related operator costs that are automatically added to the labor. And uh, the other category is for those miscellaneous items that uh, don't always fit uh, into the other categories that are posted like labor and material and equipment. Um, and that sometimes also relates to, uh, let's just say that you just have lump sum items and you want uh, concrete, for example, to be $475 per cubic yard. You could just plug in a lump sum for labor, material, and equipment all combined, and you would then put that under other. So key estimating features, uh, just gonna touch on them real quickly here. Uh, sequence tabs provide definable data sorting. And these are the sequence tabs down across the bottom right here that you see. In other words, it takes the data and it sorts it in a multitude of different ways uh, as needed. Uh, spreadsheet layouts uh, provide select fields for analysis. Uh, going back again, to this layout here, it starts with group and then phase, description, and so on. This could be in any order. You could have a WBS code and it, you could have it sort by the WBS code first. We're not live right here, so I can't show you that, but that's available uh, if we were to follow up with uh, any additional information for you. Uh, next we have um, adjust estimate by cost or estimate cost by item, section, group, or category. And keep in mind that whenever you make any cost changes inside of the estimate, it only affects the estimate. It does not ever affect the database. Uh, conceptual estimating, it's ideal for this, where you can actually generate cost it, uh, iterations from conceptual, uh, which is often used in unit format level one, and take it all the way on through to uh, a more complete detailed estimate with master format uh, as high as level four, or even five for that matter. Uh, you can switch from imperial to metric or view both at one time. Um, the information rolls up and collapses at multiple levels of the coding system. So you can take all of your division nine or group nine items and roll them up into one line item or you could expand with as many levels that are inside of each one of those. And it's always organized the way you need it with save settings, uh, 
that could be your company standards or it could be just a save setting that's unique to each estimator. Work breakdown structures are the key and it's uh, heard about quite a bit in throughout the entire construction industry, whether it be for scheduling or uh, for project management, what have you. Well, it also is vital inside of our estimating system and you have complete control over establishing default work breakdown structures or they could be work breakdown structures that are unique to the estimate. And um, they support a limited uh, sorting and grouping and filtering for any project needs, including phase of work, uh, bid form breakdowns, uh, and even accounting need for that matter. So once this becomes a project, accounting has a say, or even a project manager might need it broken out differently. You have full control over how you set that up. Next, we have the totals page uh, markups and add-ons. So when you create these layouts, there are some that, come, that become available uh, if you purchase a database, but otherwise you can create your own and then you save them for reuse as templates and you'll typically save one as a default that your company uses every time. No more are the calculations, the individual calculations that you might have to go through. These are all preset calculations. They could be tweaked at any time, like in this case, you could even adjust percentages. But keep in mind that uh, right out of, you know, when you first load your template, uh, it's going to give you exactly what you expect to see. Even if you have a, um, let's just say you've got a matrix for bonds and insurance, it's going to be doing calculations based on a total dollar amount of the project. So it varies at different levels of cost. Uh, allocate definable costs uh, across the estimate or specific sections. Uh, that's this area right here. It'll actually take, let's just say, contingency costs, and it'll actually spread it across the entire estimate and not have it show up on your totals page. Uh, sometimes it's a valuable tool uh, if you have owners uh, involved that sometimes like to think that they own the contingency or the control of the contingency. This here could be contingency uh, that might be specific uh, to your own needs, uh, cost items that kind of fall between the trades. So um, all calculations are definable and saved for future use. And do notice that here is the hours that I mentioned earlier. You have equipment hours and you also have the labor hours. This could also be set up as days, but this is most valuable when it comes to uh, the scheduler doing a projection on what it's going to take to build this project. And uh, at least they could see the hours and the man days. It'll still take a scheduler to set up the, um, the actual durations overall, or the crew sizes for that matter. Uh, reporting, uh, extensive reporting is ready to use right out of the box and includes uh, options for grouping and filtering. Uh, refined reports can be saved as templates throughout the entire um, system and you could also set up your reports to have any heading and footing, footers that you want including uh, your logos. Some of the reports available for estimating is um, our takeoff audits, uh, standard estimates, <coughs> excuse me, estimate details, um, field reports. Uh, keep in mind that uh, there's a, a number of reports that are most valuable when you're estimating, but then as it becomes a project, you still need to report it differently for your field people and for uh, your accounting for that matter. Databases, uh, pre-built or custom. SAGE and RS means databases are, are available right away and ready to use if you desire to go that route. A lot of companies set up their own, but most often companies will actually purchase a database to already get the structure that they need, the coding structure and what have you, and then modify the database specific to their needs. From general to uh, specialty contractors that are self-performing, um, then you have general contracting, subs, commercial, residential, and industrial. There's databases for pretty much every trade. In addition, you have annual pricing updates to the cost, and one very important feature on many of the databases is the city cost index of almost uh, 300 cities, actually over 300 cities in the, in the United States. <clears throat> A valuable tool, 
And this also points to uh, the fact that you can have flexible rates uh, even if you have a, um, let's just say you have prevailing wage rates that are specific to a project. You can plug those in and have a very specific rate class just for this particular estimate and it tracks it. And it also has, you know, keeps track of what the, uh, the original rates were before you made any modifications. It's fully customizable and can be created from scratch or uh, replicate virtually any estimating or Excel database that you may already have. Very important tool for estimating that is not available with spreadsheets unless you put a lot of work into it is an estimating management system. Uh, here you can organize all your estimates and all your databases. <clears throat> you can set the roles and permission for, uh, permissions for each estimator or user. And that also includes who can save and who could uh, open up uh, files. Um, most important for estimators is that when you complete a project, you want to be able to lock it so that there's no changes accidentally. Uh, you have a, a record of it. So a number of techniques for that, but a lot of it is um, set up around the permissions for each individual user. Uh, filtering estimates with up to 16 customizable job classifications is an ideal tool uh, to be able to look up similar projects if you want to do side-by-side -side comparison of projects that you've already estimated to help support the current costs that you may already have. And um, I think we have one more here. Apologize, I lost my spot. Here we go, questions and answers. So, so with that, uh, there's too many features and benefits uh, to cover in this webinar. Uh, to find out more uh, about why Sage Estimating has been the benchmark uh, for all estimating systems, uh, we have more information for you on that, and it's not exclusive to generals or subs, as I had mentioned. The level of detail that's available for subcontractors is ideal, yet at the same time, for general contractors, sometimes the detail isn't as important, but it's still available to support their costing system. 59% of the top uh, ENR 400 contractors use SAGE, and 33% of ENR top 600 specialty contractors uh, use SAGE. So with that, um, looks like I might be uh, pretty much on schedule. I'm going to ask Alani if she has any questions uh, or has anything else to add to this before we take any questions that might be coming in. I have not seen any questions come through just yet. So um, you can go ahead and answer any that you've had uh, come in beforehand. Uh, actually, I do have one coming in right now. Um, Simon. Yeah, Simon asks, um, can SAGE estimating work on a standalone system? And the answer to that is absolutely yes, uh, although the estimates in the database would be restricted to that one desktop. If you have two users, uh, they would really want to share the same database. That would be the ideal uh, situation. So the benefits of a centralized database for all users provides consistent estimate structure and pricing. Uh, looks like I've got another one here from uh, Stephen and says I'm a metal framing drywall contractor and I've been under the impression that Sage estimating is too robust for my needs. Is this true? Well, it's a great question and as I touched on earlier, uh, there's a level of detail that uh, it is, Sage estimating you could say could be, have been designed for subcontractors because there is so much detail. Uh, for any trade that's needed. Uh, whether you need to estimate uh, down to the actual screw for your metal studs framing um, installation, uh, or if you just need a square foot cost or a linear foot cost for a partition, it can do all of those. Uh, any level of detail needs to be looked at. So it is unparalleled when it comes to uh, working with labor resources, uh, required crews, and specific project labor rates as well as the productivity that goes with that. Uh, that's extremely granular and uh, so it's ideal for uh, contractors, uh, subcontractors to, uh, to have that capability and then be able to uh, compare multiple estimates uh, side by side when they're done with them. 
And it looks like I might have time for one more question that's uh, coming in here. Um, Nancy asks, uh, can we use our own estimating coding system? Uh, absolutely. Uh, this would have to be implemented or added to your database system. But keep in mind that if you purchase a database uh, with its own unique master format code, you don't want to get rid of that. You want to keep that. But at the same time, you could have a parallel coding system. So every item in your database could have two or three or even four separate codes associated with them. So that in this particular case, it uh, looks like what Nancy's uh, pointing at is that it's related to their accounting system. So by actually having that set up properly, uh, you have job cost codes that are readily available. You don't have to add them to anything at the end of the estimate unless you want to change something. But as soon as the estimate becomes a project, you can just press a few buttons and put out a report and also transfer the data directly into SAGE estimating or even other estimating programs. Uh, or, I'm sorry, accounting, uh, SAGE accounting or other accounting programs. So the job cost codes would then support accounting as well as even project management uh, and uh, their system, their setup. So it's ideal to work with the same coding system throughout the entire company. So since everything starts in estimating, estimating needs to provide the standardized coding system that any company would, would actually need. And I have uh, two questions that came in, uh, two questions from Nicholas, if we have time to uh, get into them real quick. Sure. Uh, the most recent question, the WBS form, do we have to take off the materials off individually or can we use our takeoff and Sage automatically sorts it into the WBS form? That's question number one. Okay, the uh, WS codes, the system needs to understand where the items are going to go. So, for example, if you have a WBS code that is by floor, okay, floor one, floor two, and so on, as you're running your estimate, you can go ahead and say, okay, from this point forward, I want everything to be the second floor, and it'll save all those items in that WBS code. Uh, if this happens a lot, you build an estimate, and you find out later through an addendum that they want it broken out. You can take the entire estimate and group it in different ways to where you could then say, I want this block of information to be part of phase one and this block to be part of phase two. So in other words, you can establish what the items are associated with, uh, which WBS code either before or after. Obviously, it's, it's best if it's done ahead of time and not only that, it has an effect on your um, on your takeoff too. So if you find out later that the job is split in two phases, somehow you need to get your your quantities split as well, and then those quantities would also feed into estimating and break up the information accordingly. So I hope that answered that question. And you have another one you said. Yes, Nicholas asks. Um, we use Trimble Quick Pen, which is an on-screen takeoff solution. The takeoff can be downloaded into Excel. How can I import that takeoff into Sage Estimating? Uh, Sage doesn't allow you to import um, Excel directly into it, but you can, obviously, you can tag them. You can actually just move the information back and forth. There's other programs that are available, uh, on-screen takeoff systems, like on, the actual on-screen uh, on-center software, as well as e-takeoff, which is uh, literally like a cousin to Sage Estimating, where you can actually do the takeoff and it automatically will import the information directly into Estimating. And you can actually see the item inside your estimate and say, I'd like to see that on the drawings. It'll actually take you back into the takeoff and show you exactly where those partitions are or where those footings are. So uh, it's there's a lot of programs out there uh, for takeoff, and um, just about all of them uh, will actually export into Excel. But uh, Excel, you'd actually have to capture those items and bring them into estimating one at a time, uh, unless you use a different uh, takeoff system. But I'd be more than happy to go over that with you and some of the advantages and um, and methods that are used for sage estimating and inputting uh, the data. Great. Any more That's questions? all the questions that I see. Yeah. 
So, so with that, anyone that's uh, on this, uh, this call or this, uh, this webinar, uh, love to do a live demonstration with anybody on this and show you exactly what the system can do, uh, how it might fit your needs uh, better uh, than what you already are using. And, uh, you know, the advantages, disadvantages of um, one system versus another. So um, please let us know. Uh, there's information at the bottom of the, uh, the webinar. And, and I think, uh, Lilani, does everybody get a copy of this so they can access this uh, afterwards, I guess? Yes, absolutely. This um, will actually be published on YouTube, on our YouTube channel. So um, we can share that with any other uh, team members that they'd like to share it with as well. Great. So with that, uh, our information at teamtag.net is in there on our website. Or you can also contact me uh, directly at ed.wenz, that's W-E-N-Z, at teamtag.net. Uh, that information is also uh, on the Q&A uh, screen at the end of the, uh, the webinar. So delighted that I've had a chance to show you this and uh, love to hear back with any questions that you may have. Thank you. Have a great week, everyone. Thank you.